Good morning. Good to see you all here on this uh, Sunday, April 10, 2022. Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion. And we worship with uh, Divine Service Heading 3 and Lutheran Service Book on page 184 here at Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church of Wathena, Kansas. And we start with the singing of hymn number 441, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty, 441. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with the true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in his name, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. 
Grant this, Lord, unto us all. We continue speaking responsively the words of the intro which are printed in your worship bulletin for this morning. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors. Who is this King of glory? Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors. Who is this King of glory? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the scripture readings. The Old Testament lesson from God's word for this Palm Sunday is the appointed psalm for Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion. It is Psalm 118, verses 19 through 29. It serves as one of two texts for the sermon meditation this morning. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ entered once for all into the holy places by means of his own blood. Therefore, he is the mediator of 
of a new covenant He sent redemption to His people. The epistle lesson is taken from the letter to the the Philippians, the second chapter, verses 5 through 11. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours, in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross." Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated for the Gospel reading, which is longer than normal. Luke chapter 23, verses 1 through 56, the other of the two sermon texts for today. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate, And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priest and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad for he had long desired to see him because he had heard about him and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. So he questioned him at some length, but he made no answer. The chief priest and the scribes stood by vehemently accusing him and Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then, arraying him in splendid clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day, for before then this they had been at enmity with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was misleading the people. And after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they cried out all together, Away with this man and release to us Barabbas a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus. But they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt deserving death. I will therefore punish and release him. 
But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, for whom they asked, but he delivered Jesus over to their will. And as they led him away, they released one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. <clears throat> but turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we, indeed, justly, for we are receiving the due rewards of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. <clears throat> and he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance <clears throat> watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council a good and righteous man who had not consented to their decision and action, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb out cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day, they rested according to the commandment. This is the word of the Lord.
We continue confessing our faith God gave us in baptism using the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 192. We stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue singing the next hymn, the sermon hymn, hymn 442, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, 442. stand as you are able. God's grace and His mercy and His peace be multiplied to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The texts are the Old Testament lesson from Psalm 118 and the Gospel lesson from Luke chapter 23, read a moment ago. Please be seated.
Verse 24 of today's appointed psalm for today, Palm Sunday, is the very famous, very often quoted, and very often displayed in many sorts of gift items in Christian bookstores. Has been for a quite a long while. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Those are words of encouragement. Encouragement to lift up your your head from looking down at yourself. Picture yourself being grabbed by your hair by God and yanking your head up So you stop looking down at yourself and the world around you. Which always, at this time and in all times, always gives us plenty of reason for very morbid despondency, despair, and even defeat to feast your mind's eye upon. But this passage instantly transforms into the greatest of joyful exultation when it is seen in its proper place, its proper rightful biblical position with the narrative of the gospel lesson for today from Luke chapter 23. They're perfectly juxtaposed with each other. We see the crucifixion And we see the center cross on Mount Calvary in today's Gospel lesson. When seemingly thousands of people spontaneously formed a parade, yeah, a parade on Palm Sunday, parade to joyfully exult over the coming of their Savior, their Deliverer. Jesus. But those people didn't know what Jesus had arrived to deliver them from. They had been misled by their own short-sighted, wishful thinking. They were not concerned with their sinful disobedience against God the Father, They were not concerned that that sinful disobedience against God the Father would damn them to hell for eternity when they died physically. No, they weren't concerned with that. Instead, they were concerned with being out from under the tyrannical rule and oppression of the Roman government of that day which was constantly, constantly in their face with its sandals on their neck, holding them down. Okay. That being the case, those folks then on that parade route in Jerusalem on Palm Sunday were exactly like you and me here today, like our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, and every descendant that we might have in human history, every generation in human history. We all have great difficulty looking and focusing on our eternity. We have great difficulty looking past the end of our nose. Because this dying world constantly shoves itself in front of that end of the nose and says, me first. 
me only. Look at me, only me. Well, so we spontaneously go out and shout for the joy at the parable of our deliverer, at the parade of our deliverer from our most pressing and immediate problems. And we always have those pressing and immediate problems. Sometimes they're huge and enormous, sometimes not so much, but they're always there. But it's hard to see past those immediate problems. It's hard to see the need for deliverance into the eternal, past the end of our nose, for deliverance that's for something that we can rarely see or choose to see or choose to acknowledge that is our sin, our death, and the devil. Our need for deliverance is exactly what Jesus delivers into us from his blood-soaked cross on Good Friday. Five days after the parade that we all enjoy. Everybody loves a parade. It's five days after that parade where we are hoping and shouting and whooping it up for what appears to be deliverance from our most immediate needs and problems of this life. But Christ Jesus lovingly told us in his word, the Bible, that he was traveling a long, long time to his center cross on Mount Calvary to, play, to pay his lifeblood as the one and only sacrifice that was going to be satisfactory and sufficient in the eyes of God the Father for all the sins of all the world, past, present, and future. He told us through his prophet in his Old Testament, his Old Covenant, including the psalmist in today's psalm text. That's what he was telling us. And today's psalm text reads like a lot, someone, um, uh, like someone shouting out joyfully and confidently in the deliverance of the person on the one and only float in the parade. Just one float. One person on that float. It is, as they say in Rose Bowl parade parlance, a mounted float. They're riding some four-legged creature. You think that would be acceptable in a Rose Bowl parade today? Would you turn on your television to watch that? A man riding on a donkey? Do you think the crowd might become suddenly silent in seeing that one man mounted float riding on a donkey? Do you think their jaws might be hanging down? They wouldn't if today's psalmist was in the crowd. Oh no. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. That's what the psalmist would be shouting out from the, just behind the barriers along the parade route. That's what he says in verse 19. And that's exactly what Christ Jesus joyfully, although very bloodily, did in you and me by the power of his word and the faith that he created in you and me in his sacrament of holy baptism. He opened those gates. He opened them with his sufficient and satisfactory sacrifice on his Good Friday cross that made and makes it truly good Friday. 
His long promised and long prophesied job of opening those gates, it's officially finished, complete, done. That's what Jesus is telling you and me when he is joyfully and lovingly shouts back to the parade crowd from his cross, it is finished. So the psalmist, hundreds of years before Christ Jesus' Palm Sunday victory parade of loving fulfillment of promise, correctly acknowledges the fact in verse 20 that Jesus, most clearly on his cross, is the gate of the Lord thrown wide open for all those that he has made righteous in faith to enter into his heaven. You know, our afterlife. That afterlife that is so hard for us to see because it's out there way past the end of our nose that has so many things blocking our view before we even get to the end of our nose. The psalmist says, this is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. Through Jesus. Jesus on his cross. The psalmist is overcome with this Holy Spirit-given insight and awareness that the one man on the one donkey in the parade, the parade of the distant future, the parade that is the answer right there in front of him to see to his every prayer for deliverance, forgiveness, eternal life, and salvation right there in front of him on that lowly donkey. It's real. It's true. It's right there. So the psalmist says to the grand master of this world's one-man parade, the only real parade of victory through death in verses 21 through 23, I thank you. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. The psalmist might turn around to those in the crowd along the parade route. It is marvelous in our eyes. And it is. The psalmist then, giving voice to the Holy Spirit, speaking into him, goes on in verse 24 to turn around to the parade crowd around him who may be cringing at this psalmist behavior, his over-the-top joyful exaltation. He turns around and he says to them, says to you and me, whatever day it may be, every day that it may be, every day for you and me that it may be, the impact and the truth and the reality of Christ Jesus' cross of shame is actually his cross of victorious fame which he has lovingly made yours and my victory in faith by the power of his word. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Then the psalmist turns back around from the remainder of the crowd around him, the crowd of the world's entire population, past, present, and future. And he leads that crowd by example, even though he may be the only one speaking, 
in shouting out in verses 25 through 27 to that grand master, that one man, one donkey, one float in the parade to end all parades. Save us, we pray. O oh Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. And me, he has made his light to shine in, upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice and with cords up to the horns of the altar. The Lord is God. The Lord is God has made his light to shine, his light to shine of eternal life on us. He has bound the festal sacrifice, that is, Christ Jesus the innocent, with cords to the horns of the altar. <clears throat> he did that on Jesus Christ's Good Friday cross. There you have Passion Week. There is the next five days of Passion Week summarized. Excuse me. <coughs> that is where and why the gospel that the Grand Master riding on his donkey in his one man parade to end all parades of yours and my celebration of our sinful self-righteousness and self-idolatry and self-love speaks into you and to me. At this point, the psalmist seemingly has lost track of his surroundings. He is so excited, he is so joyful, he is so overcome with the grace of God, that grand master on his donkey there in front of him, that he, it says in verses 28 and 29, he shouts out to the Grand Master. That's his entire world at this point. Everything else fades from his view and his hearing, his senses. He shouts out to the Grand Master, You are my God. And I will give thanks to you you are my God. I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion, today, Holy Monday, tomorrow. Holy Tuesday, day after the, tomorrow. Holy Wednesday, two days after tomorrow. Monday, Thursday. Good Friday. Holy Saturday. Easter Sunday. Easter Monday. Easter Tuesday. Your birthday anniversary. Your wedding anniversary and all of your days with all of their circumstances including your death day the day you die and all of your endless days with him in the eternity of his heaven they're all the day to celebrate Jesus Christ's crucifixion and his Control, complete loving control over all your days. All your sin. All your death. All your eternal life. 
Praise God from whom all these blessed days flow, now and always. Amen. We stand and sing. Please stand for prayer as you are able. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank and praise you for your giving us your crucifixion and control. We thank you for this day to celebrate your gift of eternal life to us that has been heralded in many ways in many times but is the greatest gift of all from our true and greatest need we thank and praise you for that and now we pray that you be with in your gracious mercy your or the family and friends of russell dwyer the family and friends of mary bell doll sarah bay sarah Jim, Sarah, Drew Elrod, Mike Nelson, Eric Stark, Edna Rader, Agnes Keenoff, Nakia Weber, Heidi Dwyer, Judy Thumler, Preston McGoy, Roger Altavote, Maureen Michael, Richard Blanton, Gavin Euler, Emily Keenoff, Gary Payton, Ken Rader, Vanessa Seward, Kenley Weber, Reverend Robert M. Ziegler, Pam Reeser, Dixie Payton, John Keenoff, Liz Barr, Anna Nymphs, Carolyn Piker. We pray we, you be with them in all needs of body, soul, and spirit as you are with us all, giving us what we need the most and best from your good and gracious hand who knows best in all circumstances and situations. We thank you for this, and we pray now in the name of our crucified Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Please be seated as we sing the closing hymn, hymn 443, Hosanna, loud Hosanna, 443. Sunday, and so that means this is busy, busy time here in Holy Slash Passion Week um, in Christendom, including here at Christ Lutheran and Athena. And so please take a look at the announcement section in the bulletin, which I think, which I hope, is up to date and complete. Um, if any of you have looked at it already and have found any oversights or omissions, please say so. Uh, Women's Bible study is Wednesday at 6. Wednesday at 6. Okay, thank you. Women's Bible study here at church, Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Holy Wednesday. Okay. All right, and also, uh, we with uh, tongue-in-cheek, we have... Uh, the opportunity to um, 
You can all line up for autographs from a very famous person that we have here amongst us, uh, Heather Weber. It seems that she wrote the devotions for this month in Portals of Prayer. Looks like she's been busy, though. Uh, it says here in uh, her biography that uh, she is a mother of four and a wife to a pastor. Wow! <laughs> You'll have to bring the other two so we can meet them. Okay. Now, actually, there is a Heather J. Weber. I don't know what your middle name is, but... Uh, uh, she is the author, and she lives in Moline, Illinois, but couldn't, couldn't pass up a little levity there. All right. Thank you. God bless. Lord willing, we'll see you Thursday. <laughs>